In the early 1900s, anthropologist Alfred Irving Hollowell set out on a search for knowledge that would lead to the far reaches of the northern world. His intention was to survey bare ceremonialism in its widest aspects among the peoples of both North America and Eurasia with a view to determining the geographical distribution of genuine similarities in customs and beliefs, as well as to indicate the significant differences which are to be found in the various tribes and culture areas. He compiled ethnographic and historical sources of information on bear rights and stories of native societies throughout the circumpolar region. His survey revisited ancestral traditions of Sami and Finnic people of Scandinavia, Kanti and Mansai people of Siberia, Ainu and Koryak people of Northeast Asia, and Haida and Tlingit people of North America, along with many other indigenous societies. In 1926, the results of his study were published in the journal American Anthropologist. The volume, Bear Ceremonialism in the Northern Hemisphere, continues to inform scholarship to this day. Hollowell was compelled by what he described as the perplexing question as to whether or not the typical ceremonies connected with the bear on both continents have any historical roots in common. Today, despite nearly a century of scholarship, this and other long-standing questions about bear ceremonialism remain unanswered. One of the most enduring questions in historical discourse on bear ceremonialism is the question, when did it begin? Scholars working in different comparative fields have postulated that widespread distribution of distinctive similarities in circumpolar arts and storytelling traditions is indicative of their relative depth in time. For instance, in 2007, Clive Tolley, an expert in comparative mythology observed, the bear rites recorded from northern Siberia are remarkably homogenous, suggesting that etiological tales recognizably similar to each other will have existed over a wide span of time and space. But can ethnographic analogies be identified in archaeological and paleontological evidence? If so, how far back in time can they be traced? Physical evidence of human behaviors associated with bears from before the arrival of Homo sapiens on the continent of Europe is limited, but evidence that exists is highly informative. In 2018, a team of scientists led by archaeozoologist Matteo Ramadini identified evidence of close interactions between humans and bears, characterized by competition between Neanderthals, cave bears, and brown bears for environmental resources in Europe. The team examined faunal remains of bears recovered from two Paleolithic sites in southern Europe, dated between 49,000 to 42,000 years ago. They detected precision cut marks on some of the bones, supporting the hypothesis that Neanderthal people preyed on bears, removed their hides, and processed their remains. The authors described the faunal assemblage as rare cases of remain accumulations generated by the human predation of bears of varied age classes during or near the end of hibernation. Evidence of creative ritualistic behavior among Neanderthals is extremely rare. Although there is strong evidence of close interaction with bears, there is no universally accepted evidence that Neanderthal people practiced any form of ritualistic behaviors analogous to bear rites and ethnographic records. Some parallels in subsistence behavior can be drawn, including the hunting of bears during hibernation, the processing of bear hides, and possibly the use of special hunting techniques involving trapping bears inside of their dens. However, these parallels in subsistence behavior are not suitable as basis for comparison to complex ritualistic behaviors attested to in ethnographic records. In 2001, 
Inuwun, an expert on the evolution of religion, concluded, the careful and critical use of ethnographic analogies on which the theories of a cave bear cult is founded, in the end, just serves to prove the non-existence of Paleolithic cave bear worship. Wound reviewed famous paleontological cases and strongly contested claims that evidence indicates ritualistic behaviors associated with bears among Neanderthal people. To illustrate, in 1946, the anthropologist and paleontologist André Leroy Caron discovered an assemblage of seven cave bear skulls distributed in a circular formation in Ferton's Cave in France. The discovery led to persistent speculation that the skulls were arranged that way by Neanderthal people. However, Woon contended that the arrangement resulted from flooding events that occur within the cave. She wrote, The accumulation of several skulls in one place and the absence of other bones is due to geological and sedimentological processes and not to human intervention. Woon made a similar case concerning the famous Paleolithic site Le Regardeau near Lascaux Cave in France, where the remains of a Neanderthal male, dated from 90,000 to 70,000 years ago, were discovered in association with an assemblage of brown bear bones. Excavator Eugene Bonifay initially interpreted the archaeological context of the remains as evidence of a deliberate human burial and an associated bear rite. However, this interpretation was strongly disputed. Today, a more widely accepted interpretation is that the complex distribution of Neanderthal, bear, and other animal bones resulted from natural taphonomic processes. New evidence of ritualistic behavior among Neanderthal people was recently presented in 2020 by Emma Pomeroy. Pomeroy reviewed a famous historical case in which Ralph Selecki discovered the remains of 10 Neanderthal men, women, and children inside of Shandahar Cave in Kurdistan between 1951 and 1960. Selecki excavated the remains and postulated that some of the individuals were intentionally buried. Pollen found an association with one of the individuals was interpreted as evidence that flowers were placed deliberately in a grave. The so-called flower burial hypothesis was disputed, but Pomeroy reported that in 2015, archaeologists began new excavations in the cave and discovered the remains of another adult Neanderthal male. She identified stratigraphic context, body position, and a single associated lithic artifact as possible evidence of a deliberate burial. In 1995, Scientists from the Slovenian Academy of Sciences and Arts recovered a unique artifact from Djave Cave in northwest Slovenia. The now famous Djave Babe flute is dated to about 60,000 to 50,000 years ago and is regarded as the oldest known musical instrument in the world. It was made from the left femur of a cave bear cub. The Natural History Museum of Slovenia described the artifact as Fundamental evidence that Neanderthals were, like us, fully developed spiritual beings, capable of sophisticated artistic expression. There is strong debate about whether or not the perforations in the bone were deliberately drilled by early humans or if they were produced by carnivores, but in 2020, archaeologist Miace Turk used experimental techniques to test the two hypotheses and concluded, this unique find fulfills all conditions on the basis that it can be defined as the oldest known musical instrument. Reconstructions of the flute strongly suggest that the holes were drilled or carved precisely to produce specific ratios in pitch, effectively identical to modern musical scales. Scholars continue to investigate the behavioral and psychological evolution of early humans in Europe but based on available paleontological evidence, a strong case for bear rites analogous to ethnographic records occurring before the Upper Paleolithic cannot be made. Moving forward through time, the earliest known physical remains of Homo sapiens on the continent of Europe are dated to the early part of the Upper Paleolithic between 46 and 44,000 years ago. They were recovered from Bakokiro Cave in Bulgaria 
where they were found in association with an assemblage of bear bones, including several modified bear teeth. Holes drilled into the teeth are presumed to support ornamental functions. Jean-Jacques Hublin, an expert on human evolution, links the Paleolithic finds to the expansion of Homo sapiens and tool technologies before 45,000 years ago. He wrote, The excavations yielded pendants manufactured from cave bear teeth that are reminiscent of those later produced by the last Neanderthals of Western Europe. These finds are consistent with models based on the arrival of multiple waves of Homo sapiens into Europe coming into contact with declining Neanderthal populations. Around 14 to 18,000 years after the occupation of Bako Kuro Cave, a cave bear skull was placed conspicuously on top of a rock in the center of Chavo Cave in France. It was placed there during one of two occupations between 32 to 30,000 years ago or 27 to 26,000 years ago. On the cave walls, silhouettes of bears are painted in red ochre among the myriad of animal depictions, indicating that bears had some symbolic significance to the artists. Paleontological evidence from Chavao Cave attests to many remarkable associations between Homo sapiens and bears, and yet, scholars do not agree if this amounts to evidence of ritualistic behaviors. Questions about the earliest paleontological evidence of bear ceremonialism, analogous to rites and ethnographic records, were recently addressed in a 2007 study by paleontologist Mietje germain Pre and researcher Riku Hamalainen. The study focused on the significance of red ochre paint used in Upper Paleolithic burials of humans and in bear rites recorded in ethnographic records. The scientists examined bear faunal remains recovered from three cave sites in Belgium, dated as early as 27,590 years ago, and detected traces of red ochre on some of the bones, most prominently on the skulls. The scientists compared these findings to ceremonial treatment of bear remains and ethnographic records of Northeastern Asian and North American native societies. Based in this comparative context, the scientists concluded that a proto-bear ceremonialism existed during the Upper Paleolithic. Among the many ethnographic analogies that the authors drew was one to a traditional Shimshian North American native story in which a bear instructs his human wife on how to treat his remains after he is killed. This instruction includes removing the bear's skin, drying it by a fire, and having red ochre put on it from the head to the tail, and across it, under the arms. But could there really be an historical cultural connection between the earliest evidence of bear ceremonialism in Paleolithic Europe and native stories recorded in the North American Yukon nearly 30,000 years later? Surprising support for this possibility emerged recently from several genetic studies including one that links the occupants of Bako Kuro Cave directly to living populations of North American native people. <laughs>